Maybe a good top deck, actually. Okay. Devolve. <laughs> hey, buddy, watch this. Okay. Hayaka. I'd still like to know who that was. I want to know who just beat us. The Dino Patron. It sucks to hit a... It sucks to hit a... Uh, Ooh. It sucks to hit a uh, competitor that early. This is a familiar opener. Jeez, we just saw this. Oh, that's Sounds a good roll. Like it's a good roll. Enemy RNG's menacing Nimbus then RNG's Yeah, where did the menacing Nimbus come from? To win game. Everybody keeps saying he got it from the menacing Nimbus. I know that. I'm wondering where the menacing Nimbus came from. That's what I'm trying to figure out. I don't know where the Nim Nimbus came from. What was that off of? Swashburglar. Oh, got it. Okay. Whew, that was I am tan. I don't know who that is actually. They're tan. I can tell you that much. They are tan. But beyond that, uh, I don't know who tan is. I think maybe this is going to not get hit, which is great for my faceless reacher. Less exciting because the portal keeper is such a darn good answer to it, though. Man. How often is a 5 2 actually good in Arena? In this case, it's the dream. I don't, have, I don't even have the ping back, right? So this 5-2 is just going to wreak havoc on my board. <laughs> really sucks. Maybe I could have played this, but it doesn't really help resolve that, right? Him trading does give me at least a little bit of counterplay here. Um, okay, this is honestly pretty good. It's not going to have the plus attack, but it doesn't matter right now. Both of these are... Oh, oh my god, that is such a good roll this early. Uh, okay, Fire Elemental, you're going to carry, dude. I believe. He'll pop the Divine Shield. He'll trade the 5-1. Oh, no, no, he won't. He'll he'll trade the Divine Shield into my 5-3. That 2-2 two, two just completely changes how this game plays. <laughs> that is so good! It completely changes how this game unfolds. Because now he gets to clear my board, basically. Um, and he's up a 5-drop, theoretically. Oh, my God. That's so good. <laughs> That's so good, man. Oh, I'm getting a little depressed, guys. Uh, could you move your opponent's DT? It's covering standing. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know how to turn that off. I don't want to mess it up for n what's normal. Um, maybe I'll just move the standings, because that, that's going to take a bit, but you're right. Um... We can probably just put them up here. Drink with me, friend. What just happened, guys? I missed it. But why does my opponent have an enormous board? What happened here? Arjun Rushfighter into the defender, traded the 5 1 into the defender, Silver Moon ran in, and he bounced the Fellhound with 2 2 rush. Okay, okay. Okay. It's not a bad play. Harvey wonders if the eccentric scribe is a little better here. Like, it leaves more stuff on board, but it's just a tad more awkward for him to deal with. The one ones create some op some, some some issues, right? But I guess in this way, we're, we're still even up on board, and that's okay. If he, if he decides to trade in here, that, that's fine. Man, eccentric scribe, I guess, is everywhere, isn't it? Jeez. So I'm playing an eccentric scribe behind, but that's okay. I have a sludge slurper now. This is, this breaks my walking fountain curve, but I'm okay with that, I suspect. I think we're going to be playing like a rock biter weapon anyway, because I think this will value trade. I'll rock bite. We'll trade into whatever gets played next. Maybe even run a witchy lackey somehow, but we don't want to evolve our scribe, so this seems pretty awkward. Maybe it's good on the healer, but not really. <laughs> Dude, that is really, really big. <laughs> Thankfully, the rock biter does indeed help, but it's still pretty tough. Um, For Warlock, right, I think we're better off trading this. I, I'm suspecting Warlock has too many um, AoE tools and, and ways to deal with these sorts of little boards. So 
I feel like we should trade this in just in case. It, it sets up all the all the future trades as well. I'm going to hold on the Witchy Lackey. We don't really need it right now. Might be something we use. Oh, God. <laughs> He's gotten some really good luck on those two two so far, man. Uh, yeah, I think saving the Lackey is better too. Yeah. I totally agree. This is a pretty sick turn nine play because this gets the value trade twice, right? It heals us up a ton potentially. And then um, Demon Fire on a... Two, three, two. Okay. Mortal Coil. Yeah. If two of these stay up, that's good news, though. Probably. I don't really know. Now that I say that, I'm not convinced that's true. So I think we trade here and then trade into the 2-2, two, two, right? And then I a Walking Fountain, the 6-2. This goes down to 2 health. Then I Walking Fountain this. It goes down to... Uh, one health, and then I Witchy Lackey the Walking Fountain, right? I think this is the play to maximize um, efficiency here. He's left with a bunch of 1-1s, one and I'm left with a 9-drop and a 1-1, one one, right? Which, hopefully, between the healing, and I hope we hit a good 9-drop, right? Like, what's our best result? Maybe, like, Ysera, um, I don't know, Ysera, I guess. That's certainly fine. We'll take it. I mean, the Divine Shield's kind of weak against his 1-1s, one but... All three portals in, like, the next five cards. And the bulldozer off the top. Awesome. That's great news. Matter Bomber here could be insane, and it could be garbage. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. We needed to pop the Divine Shield and kill as many things as we can. Um, as many things as it can. Pop the Divine Shield, most important, because it saves me nine health. Okay, I'll take it, honestly. I'll take it. That last one was kind of a waste. But in the scheme of things, I'll take it, man. That's a fine result, honestly. Um, yeah, let's Soldier of Fortune, right? All he has is a spare part and two other cards. I'm more, far more worried about stats right now than, like, coins. Coins are not going to matter much when you're this light on cards, although he is going to be life-tapping soon, so he'll find more cards, I'm sure. Highlighted Reaper. That's a 2-2 two -two with Rush. We know that. That's probably his only two drops, so hopefully that means some of this stuff was... I need a good top deck, guys. We need a meaningful card, like Dr. Boom, right now. Dr. Boom. Dr. Boom. Dr. Boom. Dr. Boom. Dr. Boom. Close. Close. Still good enough. No two drop, hopefully. He has the two drop. We'll have to face tank it. That's fine. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. Scheme of things, okay. All right, so we're head on board significantly. We know he has two garbage cards and two real cards. So he life taps into a third real card. So he has three choices. I have only a Puddle Stomper, but the good news is for me that I do have a lot of good stuff in my deck. We're pretty likely to draw something meaningful. Not really any terrible draws. Maybe like Mana Wraith is pretty bad. Ancestral Spirit even now is good. Oh, man. It's turning those few cards into a lot of cards, unfortunately. Spending a ton of mana so far, though. So, pretty low tempo turn. But a significantly uh, high value turn. High resource turn. Violet Warden. Okay, we can definitely push through that. Or we can hex it, which we will absolutely do. I unfortunately have to trade here to protect my 5-2, unless I hit a healing totem. So we'll see if I hit a healing totem or not. No healing totem. So I think we do have to trade. I guess we can go face for 5, theoretically. Um, but to be honest, I think we're just going to fully resolve the board. I think we'll just fully resolve it, even if we lose some damage. Like, we're going to get this damage through next time. Although, maybe I don't have time for that, because we're very low on resources. We have 13, 15 damage showing. Oh my god, that is so good. That is so, so freaking good. Um, safeguard, all right. All right, this is going to be a debate. Do we just go face here, guys? I think we kind of just go face, maybe. Ants at two wins. Oh, good. He's carrying me. 
I think we just make him trade into this and go face, because I don't have a lot of time. I need to start winning the game. I need to start winning the game. I think we actually should have went face last time, too, for the record. Um, I think that was a mistake. I think he should be at 14 right now. He'd have a 1-1 one, one on board, but that's not that meaningful. Uh, so we have 9, 11 damage on board. We need to draw Dr. Boom. Just always. So, turns out face was definitely the right move there. Two coins, three real cards. Evil Heckler has taunt, certainly. Yep. Coin into a Rafam. Well, we lose this game, I guess. But at least we know. So, apparently, guys, coins are not useless when your opponent has an Archvillain Rafam. Coins are useless after turn 10, they said. <sighs> we just have to hope that's like two Lorewalker Chos. Myra's, I think, is fairly weak in the scheme of things. I'm okay with Myra's. But how am I going to get enough damage through in this right now? I need to hit Dr. Boom. Like, that's our only choice. It's got to be Boom. Morrigan on this is pretty scary, actually. Because now, like, what death row is going to come out of that? Or what minion is going to come out of that? <laughs> it's the Morrigan train. What's going on here? <laughs> Terrible top deck. Terrible top deck. Maybe a good top deck, actually. Okay. Devolve. <laughs> I mean, obviously. Obviously, we're going for this. Um, okay. This could certainly be a game winner. Um, you know what? Not great, but I'll take it. I mean, I'll take it. Not great, actually. Pretty bad. That's a that's a pretty terrible. That's a pretty terrible Stormbringer. I mean, he's got two easy trades. He kills the six two and the six three. I'm only left with eight eleven damage, thirteen with my weapon. I mean, he could get something crazy off of this. Like that, for instance. Um, he could also get something crazy off of this. And then it's like this race that I don't know if I can win. So let's just be clear here, okay? My opponent... ...had random legendaries, right? I had random legendaries. But let's compare the texture of the random legendaries that my opponent received and I received. <laughs> He has 14 damage in two minions, and I have 11 damage in four minions. Um, okay, though. What did this get? I didn't even see. This got Eager Underling. Okay. Okay, so we actually have a play here. I think we just go face. We have 11, 13, right? The ball f buys me a lot of health here. I think I maybe even buff the minions by killing the Myras here. Um, I don't know. We always kill the Edwin. The Edwin's always dying. So let's just do that first and then see where we go from there, right? So we have 17. If I kill the Myras, I go up to 21. Balf actually buys me even more health, right? Like, I'm not going to die. These would go up to 9-9 nine, nine each. So one of them could kill the Balf. The other could hit face. I'm not even remotely dead. The other one would have to trade into minions. But if I go face, right, I have 9, 11, 13. He's only at 3 health. The Snip Snaps, if it dies, you know, it gives me additional attacks on board. I think we just go face. And if I roll Taunt Totem in particular, we're in a really good spot, I think. Healing Totem is less good. Less good. I don't think I attack yet with my weapon, just in case there's, like, a Taunt Math I need to push through or something. So... Balf dies no matter what here. He doesn't trade into the Balf. He goes face. I mean, I said trade into the Balf, but I think... Oh, he does, actually. That's a mistake. He took damage on that minion for no reason. He just hit face, and the same thing happens there. Um, so I just need him to not have taunts, basically, is it. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine! <laughs> oh my god, that's a 
craziest arena game of all time.